learners. I'm Asil Pritimoni Bordoloi, Assistant Professor in Education in this university, this is KK Hendrick State Open University. Today, I'm going to deliver a presentation on which is one of the most important components of today's world, that is distance education, which is a need of our besides having conventional system of education. Before going to discuss the distance about the distance education in details, let us have a look on the importance of education. What does education imply in the present era that is commonly known as knowledge-based era? Whenever we're talking about education, we mean that at present, education is a prerequisite for gaining knowledge and skills in order to develop human mankind. Education is the only way to bring the welfare of the people of a society as a whole. In fact, education is a lifelong process from which people gather life experiences that are needed for them by them for a meaningful existence in a society. Even uh, at present, India as a developing country has the, the basic motto to accelerate human mobility and excellence. Although uh, demographically India as a whole has a great potential, because demographically we are very India is very rich, but the growth of manpower and the level of its engagement in productive activities are yet to be fully harnessed. Therefore, to make education accessible as possible to all is the important human rights for everyone living in the country. It is an urgent need to disseminate information and knowledge to the people through various modes of education. Open and distance learning is the most viable option for making education as accessible as possible for all. Whenever after knowing the importance of education, what does education actually imply? Uh, after knowing that, we must have to know what does distance education reveal. Actually, it has emerged as an effective means to bring education to the doorstep of those who are deprived of their educational opportunities in the conventional mode in the mainstream educational institution. This system, it means the open and distance learning system, offers opportunities to millions of unprivileged learners, including those like the self-employed and the housewife who desire for an enlightened and productive way of life. Distance education means a mode of learning through which education can be accessed by the people irrespective of geographical areas, physical existence of places, space, time, age, etc. Even the 11 Fibers Plan of the Government of India has made a target of covering around 40% of the total number of students under ODL means open and distance learning system. Today, for its flexibility, this system is considered indispensable as TAs as far as education is con concerned, that is, getting education at any time, anywhere, and anyhow. The basic objective behind this system is to make democratization of education possible in India. Why distance education emerged, has emerged? Emergence of distance education basically for mainly uh, some uh, facts, due to some facts, uh, those are the, that is institutional expansion, limited to the conventional system of education, era of knowledge society, economic liberalization after 1991, post-economic post reform, that is commonly known as post-economic reform in 1991, that is the economic liberalization, government action towards inclusive growth, emergence of state open universities for human capital formation and utilizing economic resources in the country. Thus, the 
mood of distance education. Distance education basically is a mood. This mood is very beneficial for those who dropped out from schools and colleges on economic compulsions and are now engaging themselves in trade and business etc. Those women who got married early and discontinued their education in schools and colleges, this mood is very beneficial for them. Those who work in offices and industries without completing degrees, diplomas, those are required for their profession. Those persons including housewives who simply could not carry on their studies in the conventional system in time and now they are desirous to pursue education. Those who want to get further education for their better, better employability in future and besides, besides these factors, the ODL system enabled the in-service persons or professionals to enhance their professional qualifications and training while on the job. The, after knowing the beneficial, basic beneficial uh, factors of distance education, now we have to uh, look at on growth of distance education in the world. Uh, it has a, actually it has a long history and earlier it was known as correspondence education. Correspondence education means the teaching learning situation where the teacher and learner have no face-to-face -face contact. They interact only through postal correspondence. Print is the only media of instruction and the printed lessons are the only source of learning for the learner. The correspondence education took formal shape in England in 1840 through Isaac Pickman who started using postal tuition to teach shorthand to many of his students spread all over England. At international level, distance education was started in 1883 when a private tutor taught English composition to his students by post providing two-way communication. Later, the academicians thought that distance education was a more appropriate term than the correspondence. In distance education, students support services and a variety of evaluation methods are an important component. Distance education is a learner-based approach. Apart from print media, distance education includes the non-print media such as radio, telephone, audio cassette, video cassettes, computer and other electronic devices. After correspondence and distance education, open learning was named in one of the issues of the Pitman's Journal in 1929, long before the first open university in the world that is commonly known as UK Open University, was, which was established in 1969. Pitman was the pioneer who introduced the shorthand education through correspondence system for the first time. Today, the open and distance learning is the most popular media for learning through which people can easily access the global learning in his or her own doorstep. Common to wealth of learning, the school is an organization that helps the common wealth member states to harness the potential of distance education and technology to enhance the people's access to learning. Asia has the largest of adult ODL learners in the world with over 70 open universities, 13 of which are mega universities. India alone has a growing network of 14 open universities, 14 open schools and nearly 150 dual mood institutions which collectively cater to over 7 million learners. Whenever we are going to uh, discuss uh, the history and growth of distance education in India, particularly in India, then it is found that several conventional universities set up their own directorates of correspondence courses. Today, there are more than 200 universities that have directorates of distance education offering programs through distance mode. After establishing open universities UK in 1969, 
had its bearing impact in India too, the first state open university in India was from Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Open University, Hyderabad, formerly it is known as Andhra Pradesh Open University, was established by an act of state legislature on August 26, 1982 on the line of the British Open University. The first Indian Open University mandate was to provide educational opportunities to adult learners who could not get a chance of pursuing higher education in the conventional universities and to democratize higher educational opportunities to the disadvantaged sections of this society. The second open university to be established was the Indira Gandhi National Open University that is all we know that is IGNU in 1985 by an act of parliament as national open university with its jurisdiction throughout the country. The list uh, I, have, I have provided to all and uh, basically there is 13 state open university in India and one central university that is commonly known we know that is Indira Gandhi National Open University. And then the state open university and there's a 13 state open university first in 1982 Andhra Pradesh B. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Open University it is in uh, in Hyderabad and the last the 13 the Assam Krishna Country Handic State Open University which was established in 2006 Maharashtra Open University Madhya Pradesh Open University Gujarat Baba Saheb Ambedkar Open University in 1984, then Bihar Nalanda Open University which was established in 1985, Karnataka State Open University which was established in 1996, then West Bengal, let us say Open University in Kolkata, established in 1997, Uttar Pradesh University, Tendon Open University in 1999, Rajasthan, Bardaman Mahabir Open University which was established in 2002, Tamil Nadu Open University, Chennai in 2002, Bihar, Pandit Sundarlal Sarma Open University, Satisgarh 2004, Uttaranchal Open University 2006, and Assam uh, in 2006, it was Krishna Handi State Open University. Interestingly, at present, the share of distance education in the gross enrollment ratio is about 23%, which is very significant because in the conventional system, the present gross enrollment ratio is about 40% or 18%. Now it is, I think it is 18% in India. Uh, actually, uh, the growth of distance education is in five generations. Um, those are well defined by Professor James C. Taylor, who had divided distance education into the five generations, which are mainly correspondence mode based on print technology, multimedia model based on print, audio and video technology, tele-learning model based on application of telecommunications technologies providing synchronous communication, flexible learning model based on online delivery via internet, intelligent flexible learning model based on advanced online technology. And today the pedagogy of ODL includes delivery interactive multimedia, CD-ROM internet-based tutoring, learning support enhanced quality interaction anywhere at any time, synchronous and asynchronous communication, both offline and online communication, equal opportunities for learners to participate or contribute, interpersonal interaction in between tutor, learners, peers, social networking and collaboration. Thus, it has seen that the open and distance learning in our country has already crossed many phases but still it has a long way to go in providing education to all. If we look at trend of the growth of distance education institution and numbers of learners in the country, then uh, from the beginning 1962, the dual mode of university or institute in India was only one and uh, total distance education institution was one. Whereas in 2010, the total dual mode university and institution was 242, the numbers, and the single mode open university's number is 14, and total distance education institution 256. This, from this table, it has found that the trend of establishing open and distance universities is moving fast, and thereby, ODL system is contributing significantly into making education 
accessible to a large number of people in the country. Whenever we check the growth of, uh, look at growth of enrollment in distance education, then already we have discussed that it has now to recover 23% uh, gross enrollment ratio in India, 23.35% to gross enrollment ratio in the country. The open and distance learning is a viable option through which it has been possible to make education accessible to all without any social, economic and cultural discrimination. It's very fast moving actually. Open learning includes removing the barriers and restrictions placed on students as evident in the conventional education system by opening up learning opportunities to a wider range of people and enabling them to learn more continually and periodically. In fact, ODIA is a cost-effective way covering a wide section of people in a society at one time cost. For instance, in online courses, the expenditure is a one-time cost for preparing it which covers a large number of people for many years. Open and distance learning has greater scope to innovate and to put flexibility into the system in order to cater for the needs of heterogeneous learners, keeping in view the senses of time and the need and requirements of the society. Therefore, today, for its advantageous section, it is called as independent learning, flexible learning, and more self-learning. Thank you.